my migration project name or anything passed into it so that it returns appropriate value. Uh, this is not a mandatory. Nothing, nothing, whatever I'm showing, nothing is mandatory. It is all optional, but it is good to have. So if it is a migration project, you pass the migration date when I'm doing the migration and you will pass a job ID just to identify that the serial number. Job ID is nothing but a serial number. So I have 10 people in the team. This guy goes first. So his, num his number is one. So in a football team even you will have numbers. In a cricket team even you have numbers. In the same way job ID is going to have a number. It's just a numeric, uh, uh, it's just a numeric which, will, which is taken out of sequence. So job status. Job status will always give you whether the job is started, running or failed. So it will also be uh, in a custom function. So workflow status. There would be a, a custom function that will tell you what is the status of a workflow. The job is running fine, but is the workflow under it also ran fine or it failed? Where it failed, which failed, everything will be recorded at the workflow status. So if you look at the metadata which I told, we'll have two tables. One records the job status, other records the workflow status. So those are the two tables which we are going to design today and start working on the template today. So the workflow end statement saying the workflow uh, status is here and finally when we say workflow end, in the workflow end statement we will record whether it is successful or, or, uh, or a failure. I mean everything can be defined in one single function that is possible but here I am trying to throw my ideas that you can have all these functions like this. But definitely these are kind of uh, organizational requirements. So as you have job status, you have job end statement saying it is successful or a failure. You can record it with a function like this. Finally, it will notify the end user saying uh, the job is successful or failure. It can email you, it can SMS you, uh, I mean it can alert you at any time. In general, companies maintain a global uh, global center. They uh, they call it. Um, I don't exactly remember the name. In uh, General Electric, when I work, there will be a 24 by 7 uh, center. Uh, I'm not getting the name of it. It is going to be the global IT center. Uh, they they call it with the different names. If you get into it, it looks like uh, you are in a Hollywood movie. You have number of screens around you. So each failure on the server will be monitored. If the server is occupying high amount of, uh, I mean, if the performance is going poor by CPUs or the process or by memory, they get an alert. Immediately it will notify. It will send an alert to them. It can notify through an SMS or an email. Even it can send something like a telegram. Uh, I mean, saying this is a very important message. You can put various layers as, as you put an voicemail. Yeah, at the end of the voicemail, it will ask you, do you want to send this voicemail as a regular or, or high importance or urgent? You can actually categorize it. In the same way, finally, it will notify you. Workflows. So before I go to workflows, are you clear so far, guys? Because I kept on talking for last 15-20 minutes and I wanted to check with you now. Is it okay so far? Are we on same page that you are able to get me? Okay, I had at least one A. Uh, if any nays, let me know. If any nay, no, I couldn't understand this, let me know. I can recap anything which, which you have missed. Because engaging over the phone, our brains are like uh, dead after 15 minutes. The, the, maximum, uh, the maximum time a person can concentrate in the scientific uh, a research they told it is 17 minutes so I will always try to distract you guys every 17 or 20 minutes so that you will not be dreaming a uh, half of the time when I am on phone I will be dreaming I will be talking to a person but still I will be dreaming about something else so uh, just to avoid that I am checking with you guys uh, did you miss anything that you want me to recap just let me know any questions so far guys No questions. Okay, all we are talking about job template. So uh, let me proceed forward with the workflow. So far we were looking at the job level, now they are at the workflow level. So a workflow is a reusable object. The definition of a workflow is, is a reusable object. 
the template has three workflows but but this is only a proposal guys it can have 10 workflows no one can stop uh, uh, stop you from doing it but on a high level it has three workflows the first workflow is responsible to extract data from a database table or a flat file it is raw data so in the first workflow you have a data flow which will actually pull data from source to target uh, your target is the stage environment so you will not do any kind of a transformations which means you should keep the da data raw in your stage environment while even talking about the data warehouse i told you the same thing from source to stage you can have some filters based on i don't want to extract all the 10 years instead i put a cutoff saying extract only last three years that is fine only you have a filter condition but you will not have a data transformation where you are converting converting currency or changing uh, changing the date format or applying something else you will not have that it is exactly the raw data so no transformations applied only minimal information like source extract date batch id file name job id are appended to the stage table in the stage table you will try to maintain all this so that you have a track of it saying what what you have extracted so some exceptions like unwanted uh, data or cutoff logic can be applied still uh, as i told you you can put some cutoff date or filter few uh, records away which you may not be required that is possible in the second workflow is an optional workflow you may use it to build stubs stubs in the dimensional model i will tell you what is a stub it is a it is a terminology that they use in uh, data warehouses stub in a data warehouse i will tell you in a bit uh, but i'm telling you the second workflow which i'm showing you which i'm proposing is an optional workflow uh, which will be used to build stubs or dimensional data or can be used to load data to a temporary table to enhance the performance of a complex transformation which means not every time you're going to do complex operations for to generalize that i can give you one example in your kitchen stadium before you cut your vegetables the raw vegetables and put it into the actual pan actual pan actually not pan so actual pan the frying pan before you do that you will also use a uh, temporary container the temporary container is friendly to wash it is uh, it is uh, for cleaning it is very efficient you will use a netted bowl you will use a glass bowl as per what is required if you are washing your vegetables if you are uh, if you are cleaning the cut vegetables draining them you will use some mesh kind of thing the same thing which i am talking about it is at, uh, it is actually to improve the performance if you are cooking noodles you know what it is you have to actually first cook the noodles and then drain them only then you can put it on the frying pan add vegetables and then cook it as a, as a noodle or else it is going to be mushy in the same way when you want it to have it in a nice presented uh, presented way performance wise you want it to improve it then you will have to put it in a temporary table or do it do it in this in this uh, optional uh, workflow i mean as why i say optional is not every recipe requires a net in between it drain it you can obviously cut the vegetables put directly in the pan and cook them if you are able to but few recipes require this so it is an optional workflow and just to talk about the stubs in the dimensional data let us go back to our original discussion when we try to do a retail uh, data mart uh, let me bring up the ppt if you wanted to have a look at it because it makes sense here because understanding that stubbing process and the dimensional modeling is very important guys that is where uh, a data warehouse engineer must act smart so let me go into our data warehouse class 2 this is the case study i was talking about earlier so let us uh, take a very close look at one of the dimension tables okay here is the dimension table uh, look at the dimension table guys here you have a product key product dimension SKU number, brand description, category description, department description. What you see is the structure of the table. In a business, in a retail store, let us say I'm doing some uh, some supermarket business. Every day you see a new product coming, isn't it? Products are not going to be stable. 
every day there is a new brand getting introduced every day there is a new uh, new uh, 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 flavor of soap or a new flavor of oil or a new flavor of a chocolate coming up so whenever you get a new flavor it is not going the data is not going to be in your data warehouse because data warehouse gets data from operational data store right so your operational data store would have got up with a new entry called as brand hl and a, a product called uh, uh, so something like uh, uh, strawberry chocolate and it will have a SKU, a SKU number SKU is nothing uh, but the serial number which you the barcode which you will see on every product you purchase that is the scanner friendly code the SKU number is a scanner friendly code you can you, uh, it is actually to the organizational uh, requirement that they design the SKU number uh, SKU number uh, but based on few uh, a few norms like the ISO has some suggestions so that you can ship the product globally uh, international standards organization it will define the SKU numbers in some, some places even some places they are called the serial numbers or SKU stands for actually store keeping unit I, if I yeah I remember it correctly it is store keeping unit so every store will have this kind of a number so to get that number added to have that product key to have the product description when you say a product is sold in 20 20 units in so and so retail store first you need to define what the product is right so in a data store in a data warehouse environment you are moving data from an operational system so you are denormalizing the structure so you say let me enter the product information first and then enter the fact table saying 20 uh, units of uh, of lux or the little soap is being sold without having the product description no one will understand it right so the uh, stubbing is the process which we do just before inserting the fact do you understand what what i am talking about guys if at least uh, two or three of you confirm only then i will proceed forward else i will not held the class Tell me if you understand stubs or this dimensional data. Okay, Krishna. And any any other guys? Any other guys? Do you understand or you need more explanation on it? Based on how many people understood it, I will try to add more log, more definition or uh, more importance for it. Okay. Yeah. So it is what is the process of stubbing or dimensional data is mine is a running business i depend upon several products that are going to come into market every day so all we planned is to build a data warehouse when i started building my data warehouse i had only 10 products but every day there is a going to be a new product that is what we talked about slowly changing dimensions let me uh, go back and this is where it is important to understand even the slowly changing dimension what it means by slowly changing dimensions is your dimensional value is going to change every day this is what it is you have a supplier key supplier code supplier name and supplier state now there is a change here i am talking about a change in the state but it can be an addition of a uh, addition of a uh, supplier it can be addition of a product so every day you get some new products when you get a new product, you have to create that product in your dimensional table before telling that there are 20 uh, soaps or 20 products that are sold yesterday. Because data warehouse is a historical data guys, it is not the current data. So it will not have the new product information and without the new product information, you cannot insert saying I have sold 20 of these products at a price of 10 rupees each and the total revenue generated is 100, 100 rupees. You cannot insert that record without at least uh, inserting the dimensional value of it. You will have to say like let us say in your home, we have built our single family home, our hero kept on growing things. So definitely when you have built the home, you, you had only 10 people. Then you have you 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 gave birth to a couple of children 
so that is what the children i am talking about you should enter into your ledger saying i have two new children so i have to then say there is an uh, investment or spendings of of 100 dollars on each each child without entering the children into your home you cannot put under an x or y saying this 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 particular person has consumed 10 liters of milk who has consumed you are telling the fact some